Welcome to this special edition of our Futurist program on the missions that the European Union is launching to find solutions to the main challenges of our time. Five missions shape the incoming Horizon Europe initiative, set to start in 2021. Carbon neutrality and smart cities, soil health and food, adaptation to climate change, the fight against cancer and the mission we're covering today, the protection of our oceans and inland waters. Our seas, oceans, coastal zones, glaciers and inland waters produce about half of the oxygen we breathe and provide 16% of the animal protein we consume. But these rich and fragile ecosystems are under threat from climate change, pollution, overfishing and tourism. So how do we protect these environments and preserve their socio-economic value? The chair of the board of the mission, Pascal Lamy, in Brussels gave us some examples of the initiative's goals. If you throw a plastic bottle onto the summit of Mont Blanc, for example, there's a 60% chance that some years later it will end up in the Mediterranean Sea. We are dealing with a complex environmental system. We have to do a lot more and in every area. For instance, we need to seriously increase the marine areas that we protect. Some of these zones are in the European Union, but we need to do more. Our objective in 2030 is 30%. Our goal is to protect 30% of our total aquatic surface by the year 2030. That will require a big effort. We also need to systematically equip our fishing boats with geolocation tools to track them and stop them from overfishing, as we know that happens a lot. We need to develop clean engines for all kinds of motorized vehicles on the seas and oceans, especially for coastal areas where ferries and coastal ships tend to be. It's easier to start with them from an energetic point of view than intercontinental transporters. Let's now look at a practical example of how European scientists are working to recover the rich underwater ecosystem of a coastal zone devastated by decades of industrial waste. At its peak in the 20th century, this steel factory covered 2 million square metres. It closed in 1992, but that was too late for the surrounding marine environment. Arsenic, mercury, chrome, lead and other heavy metal spills have transformed the rich underwater ecosystem here into a wasteland. Researchers are now trying to turn back time. They are creating underwater gardens for some of the now thriving habitats that were almost entirely wiped out. The green marine restoration includes certain algae and coral, as well as Posidonia oceanica, an endangered seagrass species that's endemic to the Mediterranean Sea. We had to intervene to save this important Posidonia habitat. As well as increasing the ecology in this area, saving the Posidonia will bring back new biodiversity and added value to these waters. Our aim is to travel back in time in a biodiversity perspective to what this area was before the start of the 20th century. Posidonia absorbs CO2 and liberates oxygen. It lives in maximum depths of around 35 meters. Scientists from this European research project closely study its biology to understand not only how it can be helped to recolonize marine habitats, but also how it is currently coping with other threats to its survival, including rising water temperatures. In reality, Posidonia is stronger than we'd expected when we started our research. In order to guarantee its survival, the plant can trigger a series of biological, metabolic mechanisms to react to the rise in water temperatures linked to climate change. 
We're studying the plant's limitations, like how hot the water must be to jeopardize the Posidonia's growth and chances of survival. The research includes finding ways to save marine ecosystems formed by Cystocera algae, which is equally under threat due to pollution, human activity and climate change. Scientists here want to understand how this particular species' fertilization rate is impacted by warmer waters. We've assessed that rising water temperatures completely alter the vital cycle of this particular species of algae. We found the algae goes into reproductive mode in seasons when it shouldn't. This means young spores are forced to grow in seasons that aren't appropriate for them and so they don't succeed in growing to adulthood. Seventy percent of the world's seas and oceans have seen a sharp decrease in biodiversity over recent years. One billion people depend on the resources from oceans, seas and inland waters. Researchers say that underwater restoration and projects can help protect this balance, but the challenges are huge. If we're looking at restoring a portion of the Amazon forest that's been destroyed, cut down or burnt, the process will probably require decades. Underwater restoration, like macroalgal forests, are more or less within that same time frame. But when you're dealing with deep water coral reefs or white coral clusters, they need hundreds of years to grow back. Along with coastal habitats, researchers want to rehabilitate shallow rock sea floors and deep sea ecosystems. Scientists say some marine environments have been generous when giving a helping hand. We didn't think Posidonia, for instance, was going to be able to survive in this area, given the underwater pollution. But we've learned that it's able to resist. Obviously, it isn't as healthy as it would be in a totally clean place, but it doesn't give up. We are now certain that our techniques will help the species to grow back. As this is really a fundamental science, we keep learning more, little by little, every day. That's it for this edition. Thanks for watching. You can find more information about this and the other EU missions on our Futurist webpage and on all our social media networks.